Hi, and welcome to Dr. Vanderveen's AP Chemistry Podcast. Today we're talking about KSP problems. This is a very important subset of equilibrium problems that you really need to be able to do. We're going to start with writing KSP expressions. What I mean by a KSP is a solubility product constant. It's really just a KQ, but of a special type where you're working with a slightly soluble salt. Many times you're just given the name of the reactant or the formula of the reactant. Um, and there are two different kinds of KSP problems. One where you, you start with the KSP value and you find the equilibrium concentrations and problems where you have the equilibrium concentrations and you need to find the KSP. But before we can do that, we need to write KSP expressions. So if we work with an insoluble salt such as lead chloride, lead 2 chloride, when this dissolves, it won't dissolve to a very great extent, but when this does dissolve, it will form ions. It will form lead 2 ions, and it will form 2 chloride ions. When they do go into solution, they'll always form this 1 to 2 ratio. So you need to first write out your balanced equation, and then you need to write a KSP expression, where it's products over reactants, and of course we don't include solids in our KEQ expressions. So the KSP expression becomes the concentration of lead ions times the concentration of chloride ions squared. And we will then work with it as we've worked with other KEQ problems. But there are always this situation where you have a solid on the left, ions on the right, your denominator in the KSP expression is always 1. So I'd like to actually jump in and do the problems and really focus there, because I think that's how you'll best be served in learning how to do these problems. All right, so the solubility of silver chloride is 1.3 times 10 to the minus fifth molar. Calculate the KSP of silver chloride. Well, here's what we know. Uh, we've got a very low concentration. We have a solid insoluble reactant. Nothing's ever really insoluble. So let's start first with the reaction. All right, we have solid silver chloride. When it goes into solution, I will form silver ions and chloride ions. Now you'll notice that these are in a one-to-one -one ratio. And so Whatever my concentration is of silver ion, I'll have the same concentration for my chloride ion. So if the silver ion is 1.3 times 10 to the minus fifth molar, then I can assume that my chloride ion is 1.3 times 10 to the minus fifth molar. And you can set this up with ice tables as well, um, but a lot of times you can work it out from stoichiometry. The second thing we need to do is write our KSP expression. And you always have to do this when you're doing Okay, an equilibrium problem. You always have to start with an equilibrium constant expression. So we'll do that. So our KSP is the concentration of silver ion times the concentration of chloride ion. And we are going to um, just substitute and evaluate. Now it turns out in this problem, since they're both in a one-to-one -one ratio, that we will square the concentration that we were given. So let me get out my calculator here. 1.35 times 10 to the minus fifth. We'll square that. And I get an answer of 1.82 times 10 to the minus 10. But of course, I really probably only allowed two sig figs because I have two sig figs here. So 1.8 times 10 to the minus 10. Remember that KEQ values, or KSPs, are usually presented as dimensionless values, so uh, we'll just leave this as our answer. You'll notice it's a very small KSP, which is consistent with this substance being uh, very poorly soluble. Let's go ahead and look at another problem. It's not every one-to-one -one ratio. So let's look at a more sophisticated problem. The question is, what is the molarity of a saturated solution of magnesium hydroxide? And we're given a KSP value of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 11. Well, we're going to work through this in a similar process. First, 
we'll write out the balanced equation, then we'll write out a KSP expression, we'll figure out how they relate to each other, and then do the math. Alright, so we have magnesium hydroxide, which is a solid. When it goes into solution, to even a tiny degree, each formula unit that dissolves will give me one magnesium ion and two hydroxide ions. Well, we don't know what their concentrations are exactly um, at equilibrium, but we can calculate this. Let's let the concentration of magnesium ion be x. Well, that's got a coefficient of 1. In terms of x, the concentration of hydroxide ion would be 2x. This is going to be important later on, so we won't want to lose track of that. All right, let's write out our KSP expression. We know that our KSP expression is equal to the magnesium ion concentration times the hydroxide ion concentration squared. So what we need to do now is substitute our values in. All right, so the magnesium ion concentration is x, and then the hydroxide ion concentration is 2x, and then we have to square it. One, just make sure your algebra is done properly here. x times 2x squared would be 4x squared. So this equals 4x cubed. And that's equal to 1.8 times 10 to the minus 11th because we were given that value for our KSP. And so we'll divide both sides by 4. Alright, so that x cubed. It's 4.5 times 10 to the negative 12. Alright, and then let's go on. We need to take the cube root of both sides in order to proceed. I always find it handy when I, my calculator has a cube root button, but if not, make sure you know how to make your calculator do that. Um, and so we'll take the cube root of both sides. And that will give us x. And so it comes out to be 1.6 times 10 to the negative 4. All right. And so the molarity of a concentrated solution of magnesium hydroxide would be 1.6 times 10 to the negative 4 molar. Now that would give us the magnesium ion concentration. I do want to remind you, the hydroxide ion concentration would be twice that big. So the algebra skills here, guys, really are, are important. Um, the relative concentrations and then plugging that in correctly to the KSP expression. We really want to be careful about your algebra here. Otherwise, these problems are not too bad to do. We'll talk another time.